Welcome to today's uh, message. Uh, today we're going to be looking at 1 Peter 1 13 to 2 3. It's part of a, uh, a new series that we're, we're teaching uh, called the Unshakable series and uh, we're looking at the the letters the first particularly the first epistle of, of Peter. Um, Peter he he's following on what we read today is following on from what he was saying regarding salvation in verses 10 and 12 and uh, talking about the prophets who spoke about the grace that was going to be revealed in Jesus about their insatiable hunger and appetite to know more about this salvation even their long and deep yearning just appear a little bit more clearly beyond the veil to see what was going to happen and he goes on to speak of, of, of their desire to know the times and and the circumstances of Christ's emergence into the world and his suffering and then Peter says of the glories that would follow and then he goes on to talk about how even even angels in heaven and I just think this is amazing even the angels in heaven uh, just long to discover more of what this salvation was all about this salvation that we we know and understand today many of us have experienced it's just so wonderful even angels can't get their head around it but in verse 13 it begins therefore and and it's often said that any time you read therefore in the Bible, you need to ask the question, what is therefore, therefore? Um, I think it's true to say that in Peter's writing, there was an urgency to communicate what is really, really important. And, and, and often it centres around the very substance and work of Christ that remind us of the why, the how, the where and the when of the gospel and the need for God's people in the light of what Christ has done to live in such a way that it reflects the character, the nature, the sacrifice of Jesus uh, and what he's done for each one of us. Uh, it is true to say that Jesus did something for us that we couldn't do for ourselves. Peter says, uh, uh, reading from the NIV, he says, therefore, prepare your minds for action. Gosh, are we, are we prepared for action? He says, prepare your minds for action. Tom Wright, in his translation in the early Christian letters for everyone, says, so fasten your belts, the belts of your mind. And, and Eugene Peterson, he picks up on this and he, he says it this way. He says, so roll up your sleeves, get your head in the game. I don't know about you, but anybody who follows the sports teams knows the highs and lows of following a sports team, uh, whether that's rugby, football or whatever. Uh, you might know the old adage that you're only good as your last game and and there is a certain truth to that especially as we apply that today um that that the important game is not the one that you've just played but the one that is now before you we know it's true that if our heads are not in the game we're going to be in for a great hiding um, and some of us have seen this and experienced this ourselves in our lives no matter how many games and how many triumphs we've already experienced however I want to quickly say this and it's really really important this analogy is is all well and good except except we must always understand the God dimension of Christ in us that God can turn our failures around as we turn to face him and confess our inadequacy and our weakness this is not about the strongest and the best and we've said that many many times what Peter is talking about today is our focus is where we are looking is it's not about um, just saying the right things it's about who we are looking at it's not just about positive confessions it's about our gaze being on on Jesus himself our eyes fixed on the object of our desire Jesus and it's got to be that way and Peter knows this really, really well. He's the one who took his eyes off of Jesus whilst he was walking towards him on the water. After Jesus said, come, and he beckoned him out of the boat. The consequences for taking your head out of the game meant that he began to sink. And, and he knows that very well. Peter is saying that there is an urgency here because of this great salvation that had been received because living for Jesus back then in that part of the Roman Empire was going to 
have its consequences. It was going to be really difficult. It was going to be really hard as it is in some places in the world today. When you give yourself to Jesus, when you start to live that life, persecution comes in all kinds of terrible ways. We've already said um, that uh, the church in Rome was at the epicentre of Nero's fury. The church was being persecuted terribly. Many, many horrible things that are almost beyond our imagination were happening to the believers in Rome. It, it was so terrible. Just go to your history books and look that up. Um, but, but what we need to understand is Peter's writing this letter because he says, listen, this is on its way. And the suffering that we're going through here is soon going to be on your doorstep. So be prepared. Gird yourself for action. Be prepared for what is coming. The letter that we are looking at is a warning and an encouragement to the people of God scattered over this vast area to be on their guard, to be prepared, to be self-controlled, having their hopes fully anchored in Jesus. This portion that we are looking at today goes on to talk about how despite the times, the imminent threat, the uncertainty, how believers are to stand out in the world. And I think that has a lot to say for us today as we live in uncertain times with imminent threat of all kinds of stuff going on in the background. How do we really live? How do we cope with all these things that are happening? But you know, Peter, he's not using the wisdom of the world here. He's not sharing methodologies and techniques that enable survival at any cost. He's basically saying in the face of this coming darkness, here is how, here is how you are going to shine. That's quite different, isn't it? How you're going to shine. Here is how you're going to stand out and be a beacon for Jesus in the depths of darkness. Here is how by your very own distinctiveness, God is going to be glorified. Remember, Jesus speaks about us being light in the darkness. This is not about our survival. This is about shining a bright light in the darkness that, that God is glorified and many men, women and children come to know him as their Lord and Saviour. You see, this letter is not about the survival or even how to survive in uncertain times. It's how to live in such a way that the followers of Jesus give glory to God. And this speaks powerfully into our present time, it, to, to a church that needs to be reminded that our future is not in the homogenized sterility of conformity, but in the radical seeming disformity of living the questionable lives of the followers of Jesus. Are you ready for that? Am I ready for that? Are we ready to embrace this? Peter talks about being ready for action. What are, what are we ready for? As I look into this camera, I'm asking the question, what are you ready for? Are we today, in fact, ready for anything or do we just roll with whatever life throws up? Are we invested? Peter echoes Paul in Romans 12 when he says, prepare your minds. Listen to what Paul says in Romans 12, 1 and 2. And, and again, just try and catch the urgency of what Paul is saying. And again, he begins with a therefore, and he says, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. Do you know, a little while ago, I read somebody say, you know, we'd, we don't need to be so focused on the Bible. All we need to do is, is just get more of the Holy Spirit and everything is going to be fine. But listen, the Holy Spirit is the author of the book and he wants us to, 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 to be enlivened by the book that we might exist full of him and full of his word in this life. This is, you know, what Paul is talking about, what Peter is talking about is more than just a, a positive mindset. This is, this is not a mindset. It's not about just repeating over and over again the things that just make us feel better. 
This is this is about setting our mind on Christ. It's, it's, it's not denying the reality of what is in front of us. It's filling our vision and our gaze with him, knowing that whatever storm heads our way, Christ is in our boat. He is with us and he said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Both Peter and Paul are urging the emerging church in response to what God has done to live brightly in the face of coming darkness and in the darkness that surrounded them. They're both saying, prepare your minds, be transformed, renew the way you think. The life we live now because of what Jesus has done for us is different from the life that we once lived. The futility Paul talks about of our thinking is changed. In fact, Galatians 2.20 says, he says this, and the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. It's not faith in faith, but faith in the Son of God. If you really want to know what it is to live the full life that Jesus promised in John 10, he says, you, you, you need to spend time with God. You need to be constantly renewed and revived by the cleansing, healing, rejuvenating waters of the word of God. It's the only way. And then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. This is not about fuzzy feelings. This is about having a certainty that's anchored in Christ. When difficult times come, and it will, it's hard to see the way forward clearly. It's easy to become overwhelmed and fearful. It's easy to retreat into the comfort of conformity like everybody else. To blend into the bland, the beige living of the nearsighted, and, and to eventually experience the sterility of sameness, of compromise. Peter and Paul echo Jesus and both offer a clarion call to stand out, stand up and stand out. Peter says, be self-controlled. And we must remember self-control is also one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. We must never forget that. And, and as the people of God, we need to learn to draw on the Holy Spirit. If you lack self-control, and to be honest, most of us do from time to time, there, there is a well, a very deep well that we can draw from. You know, it's true to say as well, some people have naturally greater abilities in demonstrating self-control than others. But remember this, pride comes before a fall. And we, and we need to learn not to become reliant on our flesh, but to become totally reliant on the Holy Spirit in all of these matters. And then we will manifest that fruit. We also need to remember that self-control is not only required when we're wrestling with sin and temptation, but also the ability to stand in the face of onslaught, persecution, ridicule, rejection and such like. That, that self-control, the self-control in fact, that causes us to, to pause before we react or bite back. And how many of us have been in that position? that causes us to keep our nerve when everybody is losing this, there's to remain in a posture of peace despite the circumstances that are before us. In verse 14 and 15, Peter echoes what Paul has spoken about in Romans 12. And he's urging the church to resist conforming to the pattern of their past lives, reminding them of what God has done and encourages them to live in that knowledge and the fullness of that. Remember in Christ, we are new creations. The old has gone and the new has come. You know, Peter is earnestly contending that they, the people he's writing to, should stand out by reflecting the holiness of the one who called them in a way that they now live. And he says these words, be holy because I am holy. He reminds them of God's holiness. Be holy because God is holy. You know, we can't do that in our own strength. Listen, you cannot be holy. I cannot be holy. We can never, we can never attain to the holiness of God. Only by allowing God to be holy for us will we really, really be effective in this. God wants the countenance of his glory to be fully reflected in our lives as we give ourselves fully to him. And Peter goes on to talk about living like strangers in the world. 
knowing that we were redeemed from the empty ways of life that we had inherited by the precious blood of Jesus. And that, that as a result of that, we experience and begin to live out the shift from old creation to new creation. Manifesting by the way that we love one another and that we live in the world that must have seemed was just out to get them. I was reminded um, this week of a scripture in Ezekiel that demonstrates what happens when God's people give in to the pressures of the world and sacrifice their distinctiveness in order to conform to the weight of pressure that's coming on them from society. And God says this to um, Ezekiel, I think in Ezekiel 11, he said, and you will know that I am the Lord. For you have not followed my decrees or have kept my laws, but have conformed to the standards of the nations around you. That was constantly Israel's problem. But God says, you will know that I am Lord. <laughs> that, that, wasn't, that wasn't in a nice, warm, fuzzy way. That was, a, that was a promise. You will know that I am Lord. God's people had surrendered all that was holy and God promised you will know that I am Lord. This was a fearful and frightening thing and they knew it. And God help us if we compromise in the same way. Let me finish with a story. Tom Wright tells a story of a man who enters into a second hand shop and looking along the shelves he sees a bottle and, and to be honest it had better days and it had been used for flowers and there was even a, a bit of an old leaf that was stuck in part of the bowl. The, the watermark uh, from where the water had been in the bowl had, had, had just kind of stained around the outside. There was a little crack down the side, but it, for some reason it just appealed to the man. It spoke to him and he took it home and he cleaned it and he mended it and he discovered that this wasn't just an ordinary bowl, but one that was quite rare and unusual. And the man, he takes the bowl that he's, he's cleaned and he's restored and he places it pride of place. The question is asked, what if the previous owner comes back to the shop and finds out that the bowl has been sold and seeks out the man who purchases it and tries to buy it back? It would only be met by the reply that it was no longer available that had been mended, that had been cleaned inside and out. And now it had been put to a new use to which it was really, really suited. N.T. Wright goes on to say, we are that bowl. And, and the key word is ransomed, or as the NIV puts it, redeemed. We have been purchased. We've been bought back. We, we, have, we might have been used for all kinds of things other than the purpose that we were created. We were broken, we were dirty, we were cracked and then God comes into the, the second hand shop, the junk shop of our lives and we become transformed. Our lives began to reflect his wholehearted love and passion and desire for us. And, and I think this is at the heart of this passage that we've been reading in 1 Peter. God comes in, he redeems us, he brings us back, he sheds his blood, he makes the sacrifice. And he desires us to then reflect and acknowledge and live out this revelation of his kindness, of his love in all the areas of our lives as we, as we seek to live for him. But not on our own. Got to remember this, guys. Not on our own. But with him residing now inside of us. Paul says, and I've said this many times, Paul talks about being an earthen vessel. But there's treasure inside. Live your life to the fullest extent, reflecting the mercy, the grace, the kindness of God. Living, knowing that you are ready for whatever comes your way because of the grace of God that is active in your life. That's all we've got for today. So bless you i hope this is of help to you and and is an encouragement as you go forward into the rest of this week blessings <music>